Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot. Where the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Welcome home, Brains. There's only one requirement to hang out on the edge, is that you open your big brain and close your small mind. Did you bring your thinking caps? It's time to put them on, because the conversation starts now. Adaptable and flexible because it's hello brains. That's right, and we are on the edge. I am so happy to have you, Jane Bishop. I've been waiting for you. <laughs> well, I've been waiting for you. Wow, you are a ray of sunshine. Brains, this is gonna be such a fun conversation. Jane is a ball of fun. Yes, she is. She is a former educator, uh, a coach, athletic coach. She worked in corporate America. Y'all, she was a PK. Y'all know what a PK is? A preacher's kid. (laughs) And a military brat. We have so much to cover in this conversation. And she's got this special thing called the Jane effect. I want to feel, touch, and and, and get immersed in what that is. Because she's got her own philosophy of doing things like Frank Sinatra, her way. Her way. (laughs) Welcome her to the edge. That's Jane Bishop. Hi, baby. Hello, April. Thank you for the opportunity to spend a little time with you in a conversation. Oh, my goodness. Well, this is going to be good because, you know, it's nothing but fun with talking to you. You are such a spirited woman. Start with your story. Tell my brains where it all began for you. Well, long ago in a faraway galaxy. Oh, no, that's another story. I told you, brains. It's funny. Let me get comfortable here. Get my yeah, my yeah. Get comfortable. You know, I have mine as well. Thank you very much. Okay. So here's here's the here's the drone high level view of my story. <laughs> okay, I as you said, I'm a PK and an army brat. So I've got the first. I've got the double whammy, as some people say. I was the oldest of three children, so I'm a sister. I am a daughter. I am an aunt. I'm a great aunt, and I am a great great aunt. I'm not that old. They just started young. <laughs> I'm a a positive interrupter. I have loved to curate from my experiences uh, from the time that I can remember growing up until today because I'm a lifelong learner. I am an unplanned solopreneur. I never had visions or dreams of having my own business, but I do, and it's a wonderful adventure. But the foundation April, all began in the first 18 years of my life and with my family. And in the first 18 years of my life, all I knew was a mobile lifestyle. We lived in five different states, 11 different cities, and one foreign country. In fact, my claim to fame is not a Tony Award or a Grammy or any of the other awards that you might have sitting on your shelf. I went to four different high schools and graduated. <laughs> wow. Now, well, you know what? That's huge. Yes. Don't go to the same high school and don't pass to the next grade. Yeah, that, they don't. But, you know, we all have a story. And what, what I love to do is help people stand on their story because the good, the bad, and the ugly is our backdrop. And that's what makes us. Absolutely. Well, that's the drone view, high level. You know, there, of course, there's lots more to that, but well, there is a lot of white spaces to color in. But I want to talk to you a little bit about the mentality and the mindset of an athlete and a coach. You know, because there's a lot of people out there that are saying I'm a coach. Yes. And the word is oversaturated. Yes. It I is. tell them all the time, with due respect, you cannot be a coach, baby, if you're still sitting on the bench. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Truer words were never spoken. <laughs> okay, you, you haven't even had an opportunity to really play the game. And there's a lot of coaches out there that are, you know, disgruntled employees. And they figure, okay, well, you know what? I'm going to quit corporate America. I'm going to quit being a W-2 employee. And I'm going to go out here and become an entrepreneur. But you can end up entrepreneur. Yes, you can. Okay, because again, in your story, you say that when you first started, it was lean and mean. Yes. So tell us a little bit about the lean days and also tell us a little bit about coaching. Okay. 
Well, I am, my basic personality is empowering investing in others. So I had the opportunity to do, to do that in the athletic world for five years at two small colleges. I was a women's basketball coach and assistant coach on a men's basketball team before it was popular for women wow. to be involved in men's athletics. And that type of coaching is a little bit different than the professional coaching I do today. But let, let, let me go back to your question. So I did that. I transitioned then into the corporate because the contract, the last contract that I had at the school that I was in, they were going a different direction and there was not a place for me on the staff. So I found myself unemployed. Having to have work, you know, it does help to have work so that we can have a roof over our head and food in our mouths. I went back to my administrative skills that I used when I was in college during the summer and got hired on at a company using those until I could kind of, you know, find my path. And I ended up staying long term at that company for over 25 years. Mm. And again, used all of the skills that I do today, the coaching, the consulting, the strategic planning, the project development, and had an opportunity to hone and develop and simply explore. I was a senior director at one point in that company, and that just didn't happen. You know, traveled all over the United States. Right, right. And then I found myself being... Well, just I'll just be blunt, ushered out with about 100 other people, oh. although it was called strategic planning, redirecting, and those of us that had been there for right. a long time. Oh, we wait, were- wait, 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 no, no, you know what they call it? You know what they call it, Jay? Yeah. They call it the golden handshake. Yeah. I call it, I call it getting the middle finger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so when I found myself at, the, at that crossroads, before that, I knew, I could see the handwriting on the wall. So I began to prepare and I thought, well, what shall I do? And it came to me and I think it was a God thing. We'll start your own business. Mm. So I did call Take the Next Step because I am passionate about helping people take the next step wherever they are in life, right. you know, whatever they're focusing on. But here, here's the common theme among all three contexts, because when I started a out my own business. Yes. I did not have the nest egg that, and the financial resources that are recommended before you start your business. Hello. Right. Right. (laughs) So I did have an investor the first couple of years to try to get things off the ground that did help the next three or four years, very lean, very, very lean, and yet still building and growing, but I love a challenge Mm -hmm. and I'm one, I'm not going to quit. I'm going to keep going on with tenacity and resilience. But in all three environments, I have consistently stayed aligned with who I am and used my gifts and skills in that setting. So it's not so much you hear people, they re, you know, they redevelop, they reimagine. My environments have been repositioned and reimagined, but not who Jane is. Right. So stay true to yourself. Yeah, you stay true to yourself. And so as a as a solopreneur, things were just about to escalate to the next phase of development. Mm -hmm. And COVID hit. So we're 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 back on the the retraction path right now. It's okay. It's all gonna work out. It's all going to work out. It's all going to work out. You know what? The, key, the key is standing on your story and embracing that and being really willing to embrace who you are. And not only that, standing on the rock. Yes. The faith. Yes. Yes. Because we live by faith and not by sight. Yes. Yes. That That's That is my teaches. guide. That's what that the word teaches us. Yes. And brains, I don't know if anybody told you, but you know, you better be glad that you woke up this morning because there's a whole lot of folks that didn't. Oh, there's a whole lot of folks that didn't and there's a whole lot of folks that won't wake up in the morning you know what you know what there's a whole lot of folks that's walking around and still ain't woke (laughs) their heads are to the ground absolutely you got to tell the truth and shame the devil you do you do and i tell people all the time you have to uh feel the feel 
and do it anyway. Yes. Yes. We're all not risk. You know, everybody's not a risk taker. I get it. You know, everybody, some people need that safety net. Somebody needs someone to hold their hand. But ultimately, you have to make your own decisions. And, you know, when you came in, you came in by yourself. When you yeah. go out, you're going out by yourself. Right. Well, you know, it's all about choice, April. Choice is a powerful life skill. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Choice and change. Yes. And and people, you know, I love Hello Brains. And I do believe my experiences growing up prepared me and gave me the increased capacity for broadening my my Absolutely. brain and broadening my vision. In fact, if I may have a little fun, yeah. one of the props that I use to encourage people to broaden their vision are my lovely sunglasses. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me tell you, I, I'm, and I'll date myself. You took me back. You took me back to the days of Hobo Kelly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me say, when I saw that first picture of you, tears came streaming down my face because I sat there. I sat there for about two years before she saw and called my name. Hello, April. You know how she used to speak to all the kids there? Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, do you not see me? I've been I know. two years. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, you know, we, uh, we all have to be challenged and encouraged and given permission right. to open up our brains we do. and see what we can learn. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I call my listeners brains is I like to explain this is when I started my show, I put a lot of thought into this. This mm -hmm. wasn't something that I just wanted to do willy nilly. I wanted to be an impactor and an influencer. Yeah. So I said, so how can I talk to people? I wanted to talk directly in their cranium. I want to talk directly in their brain. Yes. This is the place where you edit and filter your information. This is the place where you make decisions. This is where you recall information. This is where, you know, you store memories. So I said, you know what? Brains. And they're smart, heady people. Yes. And so you have this thing that you do with brains. It's called the Jane effect. What yeah. is that? Tell us about that. Well, the Jane effect is helping people stop, pause, and think as a, and they don't even realize it. I'm a positive interrupter. That's how I describe the Jane effect. Example, earlier today, I was in a store purchasing some things. And one of the things I love to do with cashiers is ask them, hi, how is your day? They typically say, fine. I don't leave it at that. I say, great. What's fine about it? Mm. they stop because <laughs> one most of the time they never ask that a question they have to pause and and nine times out of ten they will answer and this particular person today was a young uh, man probably he may have still been in high school I don't know I'm not good at telling ages but even we both had our mask on I was smiling he was smiling and I could tell he was kind of chuckling <laughs> you know, behind his mask. <laughs> and and he answered that he was glad to be up and breathing today. So the Jane factor is catching people's attention, helping them stop, pause, and think, and feeling valued and encouraged in that moment. And that's so important. That is so important that we tap into that reservoir because it's a reservoir of dreams and overflowing yes. streams with crystal yes. clear lakes and bubbling brooks. Yes. Uh, and so people need to, you know, again, do like you do. I do that with customer service people on the phone. Yes. You know, while I'm waiting for them to process my account coming up, I say, how are you doing? Yes. I used to work in a call center. And I'm telling you, it's brutal. Number one, they're downsized and everything is robotic. How many times do you call somebody uh, to inquire and you have to say representative, representative, yeah, representative. representative. <laughs> yeah three or four times. And then it <laughs> finally gets annoyed and says, oh, okay, well, I'll give you to a person. Yeah. You know, but once you get that person online, you know, they're getting the brunt of it because yeah. it's not their fault. Yes. You're not calling, you know, because you want to compliment them. You're calling them because it's a challenge. But once you talk to that person, extend a courtesy, you know, hey, how are you doing? And then let them know that they've given you excellent service, yes. or, you know, or make it a teachable moment. I had one that was not good. You know, she wasn't good at all. And I mm -hmm. said, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I said, then I'm going to talk to your manager. I said, because this is a teachable moment. Yes. I'm not trying to bust your chops. 
I said, but what you have to understand is that you are answering the phone and you're responsible. And that's what I want people to do is I want people to take responsibility for their actions. And that's what you did. You know, coaching an athlete. Athletes, and I say this with love, athletes can have egos uh, beyond belief. And you know what? It's a part of the conditioning because the conditioning is, is that you are the greatest. You will win no matter what. You have to hang in there. You are a team player. You have to, you know, if your toe is broke and you're on a soccer team, you got better hobble out there and win the game. Tell us the mindset of a coach to coach an athlete. Well, that mindset, that, that's a great question, April. One, you have to understand who you're coaching. Okay, when I was coaching in that setting, the people on the team, they were all different personalities. So you have to understand how it is that you can connect with each athlete on that team. Some need you to be in their face to get their attention. Okay? Some need a little bit softer approach. And so the coach has to understand who they're dealing with. That's number one. Number two, that mindset is, is to develop and practice over and over and over. One of my mantras that I was taught by my coaches in high school was, We are going to work so hard in practice that by the time we get to game time, it's fun. You know, game on. We don't have to think. So the mindset is teaching the mind how to respond when your your body's tired, when the ref, when the officials are not calling the game well, when you are up against an opponent that's way beyond your level. And be willing to and able to shift and be adaptable during the game setting. Absolutely. And all of that comes out of our mindset, comes out of our brains, but we have to train it. People are under the mistaken belief that an athlete just steps onto the field of play or onto the court with that mindset. It must be trained. It must be developed. It must be practiced so that you know how to dig deep when you just don't have any fuel left to go two more minutes in the game. Right. I don't know. Does that answer your question? It does answer my question. And also the comeback kid. Yes. There's there's teams. I ain't going to call y'all out, Cleveland Browns. (laughs) I know because I love y'all. But you know, football, for example, you know, you're on a losing streak. Yes. And that momentum, it breaks your drive. How do you re-engage an athlete after they've had a devastating loss or maybe they've had an injury? How do you get them back in the game? How do you put their head back in the game? Well, other than the somewhat trite answer of it depends on the person. Let me just answer it this way. You have to acknowledge what went wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, we messed up. You know, 10 players on the team, like in a football squad, they didn't didn't step up and fulfill their role because that has to happen in a team role. And then when they weren't stepping up, the rest of the team didn't step in and fill the gap. So there's an awareness of understanding. And then with that awareness, there is an assessment. Okay, how, why did we lose that game? You know, kind of a game breakdown, so to speak. And then you want to ask, all right, how can we prevent this from happening again? How can we understand and learn? You're talking about a teachable moment, you know, with the customer service. How can we learn? What resources do we need? Do we need more conditioning? Do we need a day off before a, a, a major game? You know, you have to look at all those factors. Mm-hmm. Then once you discover that probing, then you line up with that. You have to, all right, this didn't work. I know in, in we used to, uh, on the basketball, we would practice in between games get the rebound and everybody had a place on the basketball court so that whoever had the rebound 
knew whichever way they pivoted, there was going to be a teammate there. If that teammate was not there consistently, it was their teammates issue. So maybe we need to practice some more, you know, between games, but align with what you're discovering and then act on it. Absolutely. Don't just sit around and say, that's nice, act on it. But here's, here's the kicker. You've got to have accountability, mm. accountability with yourself and sure. accountability with your teammates. And the coach in an athletic setting has to create an environment for that to happen. Now, interestingly, all of those essentials and, and core factors that I just mentioned to you, they transfer to any aspect of life. Girl, I was sitting here taking notes. <laughs> I was sitting here taking notes because you had used some key terms, pivot, rebound, yes, teammate, yes, uh, alignment, accountability. That's what coaches do. Yes. Right? They yes. Don't dictate to you. No, no. They don't reinvent you. Uh, and all of these things are transferable in life. And yes. I love that because this was the perfect segue. You also, uh, I want to ask you one more question about sports. Sure. Women, basketball is really, really uh, taking a turn for the best. I'm so happy. They are looking at the salary that these women get. Yes. This was really, you know, uh, a, a double-edged sword. This really came to the forefront after the death of Kobe Bryant and yes. how he uh, really supported, you know, his mambas, his, you know, his daughter's basketball yes. team. And now they're really taking women in sports seriously. But there's an emotional piece to that, you know, uh, with women. Mm -hmm. Do you find that because we are females, um, that we are a little bit more willing to take a back seat to certain things? Or do you think that because we're women, we are more prone to really want to take charge, but really don't know how to engage. Does that question make sense? It does. And I think it's all, I think it's both of them. There are some women who are willing to take the back seat because they don't know how to do anything different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't, they haven't learned that they have a voice and it's okay to have a voice. I think also women being proactive you know, the norms of culture, April, let, let's just let's just put it out there. As far as women's athletics and gender equality has progressed in, in multiple industries, the, the culture norm is that women are inferior. Now that's not said, you know, that's not a breaking news thing, right. but it's how women are treated, it's the opportunities that they get or don't get in organizations. Great example, this past spring with the NCAA tournament with the men and the women, I don't know if you saw the story, but because they were located at this at different, I mean, all of the men went to one area and all the men, uh, the women went to another location. The workout rooms at where the men were in their NCAA basketball tournament was mm -hmm. huge. It was phenomenal, massive equipment until one of the women's basketball players posted on social media what they had. It was a few hand uh, barbells, hand weights, and a couple of yoga mats. And I think there was a jump rope. Don't hold me to that. But I mean, that was such a loud commentary mm -hmm. on the fact that they, that was part of the process for the preparing for the men to be there for that tournament. And it was not part of the process for the women. And yet both were elite programs being in the NCAA tournament. I think that's replicated more and more in not only in athletics, but in other aspects of life. Right. I believe, John, one of my favorite quotes is, you were born an original, don't die a copy. I know. I saw you. I read an article that you read. <laughs> yeah. I and, love that. And women, it's okay to have a voice and stand up for who you are and be proactive and, and earn the right to be heard and yet know that it comes with responsibility. 
It does. Well, we're in the age of the woman. We are now yes. in the age of Aquarius. It's much softer than the age of Pisces. Uh, but you know what I say, and I will say that women, you still need to work on your sexism, your yes. classism, mm -hmm. your finance, your uh, your your politics or politics, uh, uh, social equality. You know, all this is important because just because the gender changes doesn't necessarily mean no. the game changes. No, no. If you're taking away that same bag of tricks. Yep. And just putting it, you know, as they say, putting lipstick on a pig. Yes. It's going to be the same thing. Yeah. Now, men and women are wired differently. You know that our brains, you know, generally are wired differently. That doesn't make one better than the other. It's simply understanding who we're relating to. It complements one yes. another. There yes. has to be a yin to every yang. Yes. I'm going to play a, a, a fun game with you. Okay. Okay. I want to just ask you some, toss out some random words. Okay. You tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. I love it. Love, okay. All right. Here, Here we go. go. Game changer. Shift. Happy. Joyful. Food. Ice cream. <laughs> Courage. Resilience. Power. Leverage. Fear. It's okay. Love. My dad. Women. My mother and my grandmother. Independence. <laughs> the first thing that came to mind is me. <laughs> And, and, and bravo, I got to ring my bell on <laughs> You asked. That's the first thing that came to mind. That is awesome. That is awesome. Well, you know, you are a woman that is able to shift and is joyful, that loves to eat ice cream. Yeah. Resilient, knows how to leverage, um, and knows that it's okay to feel pain and honors thy mother and thy father. Mm -hmm. You are a wise woman. You've been so much fun and so just engaging and honest. I appreciate you. I appreciate women like you, Jane. You make all the difference in the world. Tell my brains how to get in contact with you so that they can work with you, so they can get more information, they can follow you, and you can see them in those big old glasses. Yes, yes, yes. We got the glasses going on. Well, you know, uh, janebishop.live, that's one way you can get in touch with me. Facebook, Jane Bishop. Instagram, Jane Bishop Live, Twitter, R. Jane Bishop, LinkedIn, and you can go to any of those sources. My phone number is listed, and believe it or not, April, you can call me, and if I'm available, I will answer. Wow. <laughs> and if I'm not available, you'll get a you'll get a message. Leave me your name, how to get back in touch with you, and I will call back. What a novel idea. Will you will you will? Yes, yes, people yes. People are afraid to answer the phone now. It's awful. We pay all this money for these cotton picked the cell phones. I tell you, I cell phone yesterday they wanted nine hundred dollars. I said nine hundred dollars yeah. just for the device. I know. Now, can I tell you one more thing? In this day and time, I have a book. It's not the bread box, Life by the Slice, and it's a it's a series of personal narratives that may help people to stop, pause, and think. Wait, put the book up again okay. and hold it right next to you. Right. Nope. Not in front of your face, to the side. Yes. 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 Red box. Red box. Now, Life is that available Life on Life. Amazon? It's available on Amazon, and it's now available as an audio book wherever you download your audio books. Oh, wow. Are you doing the narrating? Are you reading it? No, no. I had an esteemed professional narrator, Chris Kepler, do that for me. Wow. She is outstanding. Well, great. I, I recommend that. Can we do this? Can yes. I, can I have a drawing? Will you send me a copy of the book for one of my brains? Absolutely. See, brains, I'm hooking you up. Okay. Want, I want you to get your slice of life. Okay. okay. <laughs> and what I'll also do is I will send you a signature coffee mug for the winner. Okay. 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 That that will be good because they're good to have. Absolutely. <laughs> so, brains, I need you to go in, run. 
Run now, not walk. <laughs> get those <laughs> fingers going. Get that keyboard courage going. And check out Jane Bishop. Really, you know, um, she's got a beautiful smile. She's got a warm heart. She's got experience. You know, she's got the Lord. Uh, and, you know, she cares. She's pivoting. She's changed her life. She can do anything she wants to do. She can sit back and do nothing if she wanted to. But what she wants to do is she wants to pour into you. She wants to coach you. She wants to mentor you. Yes. She wants to raise you to that next level. She wants yes. you to be a winner. And so that's what I want for you too. So go in and subscribe to everything on the edge. This is where you find me. This is my address, okay? Right here. Blog Talk, uh, iTunes, Mixcloud, iHeart, YouTube, LinkedIn. She's oh, everywhere. Everywhere. Mahoney is everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, it's Ooh, that... the Mahoney factor now going on. That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> but I love you and I thank you so much for being here. Come back and keep me informed on what's going on because uh, I always need somebody good on my team. All right, April. Thank you for the opportunity to be on your show. You go rock your world. All right. Thank you, baby. All right. Bye, friends.